Hi, this is Gio for footballbook.pro. Welcome back once again. I'm really excited about this video. This video is a message to Brad Childress, who happens to be the head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Brad, I'm reaching out to you today, buddy, because I think I know how you can coach your team to a championship. First of all, I want every Vikings fan out there to spread this video around and make sure Coach Childress gets it. Okay. Now that the Gunslinger's back and Percy Harbin's migraines have gone away and you picked up a couple of wide receivers to hold the fort till Sidney Rice gets back, you still need to do one thing to win. You see, Coach, the problem with your Minnesota Vikings is this. You have a great offense and a great run defense, but you have a pretty bad pass defense. Your team can probably score as many points as any team in the NFL, but you make it too easy for them to score points against you. No one can run against you, so they pass a lot. Your problem is you haven't got a very good secondary. That is, you haven't got a very good philosophy, at least not the right philosophy for your team. So what ends up happening is your team plays a bend but don't break defense, which lets the other team score enough points or even win outright. Coach, you need to change your defensive philosophy. You need to become a riverboat gambler on defense. I'm going to tell you what I mean. The Mississippi River ends in New Orleans, who just happen to be the defending Super Bowl champions. In a lot of ways, New Orleans is very similar to the Vikings. Really good offense, not a very good defense, although at least the Vikings can stop the run. The year before New Orleans won the Super Bowl, they had virtually the same team and had an 8-8 eight and eight record and didn't make the playoffs. So what was the difference between going 8-8 eight eight one year and out of the playoffs to going 13-3 and three and winning the Super Bowl? Here's what they did. They knew they could score as many points as any team in the NFL. They have Drew Brees as their quarterback. The problem was the defense was very average. Last year, they brought in a new defensive coordinator and he brought in a different defensive philosophy where you pressure the quarterback and you allow the defensive backs to jump the routes. They told the defensive backs, if you see a chance to jump a route, go for it. You'll have nobody in front of you and you'll go all the way for a touchdown. Most interceptions are the result of a poorly thrown ball where at least the deep back um, is going to get tackled by the intended receiver. But when a receiver jumps the route, there's no one in front of them except maybe a, a slow offensive lineman or a quarterback and in a race to the end zone it's no contest. All he has to do is get a, a step against the receiver and he's gone for six points. New Orleans went from having just 15 interceptions in 2008 with zero touchdowns and an 8-8 eight eight record out of the playoffs to 29 interceptions with five of them brought back and a 13-3 record, the Lombardi Trophy. They said, we're going to gamble on defense, and if the other team goes for a long touchdown, who cares? We've got Drew Brees and a great offense, and he'll get us a touchdown on the next drive. And they would play that game. they get a touchdown, they give up a touchdown. they get another one over and over until they intercepted one, ran it all the way back, they were up by 14, and it was over. Now that the other team was down by two touchdowns, they'd have to play catch-up. They'd have to change the way they played football. They would play right into New Orleans' hands. And it's all because New Orleans became riverboat gamblers on defense. You remember last year's Super Bowl? Well, they did it to Peyton Manning, the great Peyton Manning. New Orleans had taken a lead late in the game, and Manning began to lead the Colts back on a drive that would have tied the game late. But Tracy Porter jumps in front of Reggie Wayne's route, picks it off, and runs 74 yards for a score. Let's check out the video. Picked off. Look out. Gets past Manning, and it's Tracy Porter taking it all the way. Touchdown, New Orleans.
was I saying don't blitz? Well, they sent everybody. And the Colts ran their favorite play. The outside receiver, oh, he's coming under. The timing was not there. And Tracy Porter, the quickest, fastest defensive back. Manning looks like he's in shock. He's thinking, he wasn't supposed to do that. He was supposed to allow Wayne a little five-yard play. That's what everyone was expecting Porter to do. But no, Porter gambled. And if Wayne would have gone for a touchdown, no problem. You still have three minutes left to give Drew Brees enough time to go downfield and put the Saints in a position to kick a game-winning field goal as time ran out anyway. It was beautiful. Textbook. Riverboat gambling football. Bravo, Saints. Bravo. You found the one way to beat Peyton Manning in the Super Bowl with a lousy defense. You picked your shot and you made the other team pay. That's what they did to your team, Coach Childress. They picked off Brett Favre. Porter gambled. He jumped the route at the, near the end of regulation. They snuffed out your last chance to get a touchdown. You got unlucky with the coin toss, and that was that. Now, New Orleans wasn't the first team ever to use a riverboat gambler defense. In fact, they weren't even the first team to do it against the Vikings. Let's look back 10 years ago to another city further up the Mississippi River to a city called St. Louis. You remember the Rams when they were called the greatest show on turf? They were very similar to New Orleans. Great offense that could score at will, not a very good defense. The year before they won the Super Bowl, the Rams record was 4-12 and and obviously they didn't make the playoffs. But then Kurt Warner came along at quarterback and they had Marshall Falk and a wide receiver, Isaac Bruce and Torrey Holt. That was a scary offense and they won the Super Bowl. That year, they picked off 29 passes and returned seven of them for touchdowns. It was basically the same defense as they had the year before when they only had 16 interceptions and one touchdown. But St. Louis used a riverboat gambler defense. They knew that because Warner and his friends could score at will, all they had to do was jump routes. And if the other team scored a touchdown, so be it. Warner, Falk, Bruce, Holt, and the rest of the gang were going to score on their next possession anyways. But if you jumped the route, the defender wouldn't have anyone to stop him, and it would be six points the other way. Now the other team was down by two scores, and it was game over. Two cities, New Orleans and St. Louis, both similar styles. Really good offense, lousy defense, riverboat gambling defense. Both of them won the Super Bowl. Now coach, for this defensive philosophy to work, you have to have an offense that can score at will. At least like New Orleans did last year and St. Louis did 10 years ago. But you certainly do with Brett Favre at quarterback, Adrian Peterson at running back, last year's offensive rookie of the year, Percy Harvin, wherever you want to play him, and when Rice gets back, you'll have the deepest receiving core in the entire NFL, plus a top-notch offensive line. Oh, and did I mention New Orleans and St. Louis both lie in the Mississippi River? Hmm, well, coach, guess where the Mississippi River starts? That's right, in Minnesota. It runs right through where you play football. It's meant to be. Coach, don't listen to me because I know better than you. I have a football site, that's it. You're an NFL head coach. You've probably forgotten more about football than I'll ever know. But I want you to listen to me because, well, you still have one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, Brett Favre. You see, coach, the other greatest quarterback of all time was Dan Marino, and he never won a Super Bowl. You want to know why? Dan Marino was great, and his offenses were great. But then the defense would come onto the field and they'd play that bend but don't break style instead of being riverboat gamblers. And every year the same thing happened. They eventually lost because they never did what New Orleans did or St. Louis did. They never forced the other team to adapt, the other team to change. They always played into their hands instead of the other way around. And I don't blame Miami head coach Don Shula. He won the Super Bowl two times but if you remember he had that no-name defense 
and they were actually pretty good despite their name, but they played the bend but don't break style. Unfortunately, he didn't realize that if he just changed his defensive philosophy and used a riverboat gambler defense with the great Dan Marino at quarterback, short of renaming the Vince Lombardi trophy after him, there would be no discussion as to who was the all-time greatest coach in NFL history. I'm not saying that the riverboat gambler defense works all the time. Opposing teams catch on and adapt over the offseason. Certainly, those greatest show on turf teams in St. Louis only won the Super Bowl once. But remember how I said that the Rams went from having 16 interceptions and only one brought back for a touchdown while going 4-12 and and missing the playoffs one year to having 29 interceptions with 7 brought back, a 13-3 and record and the Super Bowl the next. Well, the year after that, they dropped back down to 19 interceptions with zero touchdowns, a 10-6 and six record, and no Super Bowl. Despite still having the best offense in almost every category, just like New Orleans had before they figured it out. I'm also not saying that New Orleans is going to turn the trick again this year, especially now that opposing offensive coordinators have had the offseason to break down what they did. But you can't take away New Orleans' Super Bowl win, and you can't take away St. Louis's Super Bowl win. It's theirs. And Coach Childers, it can be yours too. But you have to become a riverboat gambler. Have your defensive backs jump routes. They'll go all the way for a touchdown, and if they get burned and you get scored upon, don't worry. Percy Harvin is going to return the kickoff for a touchdown. And if he doesn't, then Adrian Peterson is going to run for a touchdown. Or else, the gunslinger is going to throw a touchdown pass himself. Any way you look at it, you'll have nothing to worry about by being a riverboat gambler on defense. That's it. Easy, isn't it? You don't have to thank me, coach. I don't want to be paid for this information. I just want the Vikings to win. Look at my Minnesota Vikings pennant. See how old it is and see how faded it's become. It's so old that it's actually made in America. That's why I want the Vikings to win. Just imagine, Coach, the 50th anniversary of the Minnesota Vikings franchise. You've won the Super Bowl in Dallas. Commissioner Goodell hands you the Vince Lombardi trophy. Owner Ziggy Wilf gives you a contract extension. The mayor of the city gives you a ticker tape parade. Brett Favre gives you a hug and a kiss. The Vikings win. The Vikings win. Everybody, get this message to Coach Childress, please. For Football Book Pro, I'm Joe.